Good, hello, Josh. New manga chat. New stream. Welcome to manga chat. Yes, we ponied up money for for an actual, hopefully decent streaming tech. Should we tell them how much we how much we paid? Was it two twenty? Yeah, two twenty for a year. These people better appreciate it. I think this is the technology used by Noah Van Skyver, the the Comics Lounge, all the big podcasts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, very exciting. It's the big leagues now, Josh. It's really on us now. We have to really perform. Yeah, yeah. Woof. How's it going? How's your week been? Uh, not bad. Just working. I just had Dave from the secret headquarters here, a previous Manga Chat guest. Uh, store's going all right down there, apparently. How's um, Dave? But- He's good. Got some great gossip about like, upcoming books from like certain publishers. I can't talk about it, but like just like yeah, New York Review putting out. I was like, wow, they're putting that out. Like fuck. And uh, yeah, heard about some cool anthology and a bunch of cool stuff. There's Ethan Llewellyn. Sup? How you doing? Cheers, mate. I'll cheers you with my Erwan water. Clink. Tip X. Cheers. Yeah, Dave's good. Um, yeah, it's all good. We're hanging out. I signed a bunch of books. I should say I signed a bunch of the uh, the art books, the the Hypnotic Midday Movie art book. Just oh, quickly yeah. signed it. A bunch of those, like 30 of those for Secret Headquarters. So if you're in LA, get on down to Secret Headquarters and pick that up. I, I did a little doodle of each character and signed it. So, yeah, there you go. I saw someone post uh, two editions. Is one of them foreign? Uh, there's the there's this was limited to 299 copies the special edition yeah. it has 30 additional pages not in the other one you've got all these extra paintings that you well, that, that's a, I love this one this is that's a nice one that's not in the regular edition you can only get it in the fancy edition but it's sold out very quickly it's a lovely one as well the ballet school in uh, Richmond Park uh, anyway that's nice yeah I like the uh, the one with the gold spine it's really nice the yeah. it looks like a uh... I don't know, like a seventies movie book or something. That's what we were going for. Yeah, it's really nice. Are you had any comic shop operators in your house this morning? You got like, you know, the partners and sons people just in your house? What's going on? No, they don't want to come around. Really? Why not? I don't know. Uh, Gina and Tom from Partners and Son have no interest in coming around my apartment. Yeah. Well, maybe the new apartment, maybe the new one. Yeah, yeah, they'll come around there. Nice fancy apartment. I'm drinking water from Irwan, the uh, the upmarket uh, LA supermarket or celebrity shop at. It's, it's crazy yeah. whenever we go. Yeah, you know, I think it was five dollars for this water. There's the thirteen dollar or fourteen dollar medical grade water, but I just went for the the five dollar Irwan spring water. Keeping yeah, it classy. Nice. Uh, I used to go to that Irwan like when I was doing moving jobs in LA. I'd like if we stopped by one and uh, fucking hell, like twelve dollar like uh, juices. Uh, you get like yeah. a Twenty dollar falafel sandwich is mental. They had a forty dollar smoothie recently. It was a, a smoothie collab with the Cactus Plant Flea Market fashion brand. It's like a collab smoothie, forty bucks. Insane. I'd never spend forty dollars on a smoothie. It looked no. weird. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. Any, uh, any uh, you should go straight into book talk. Yeah, I mean, I've got a few books I bought this week, and uh, I think you do too. You know, talk about a few comics. What's happening in the world of comics this week? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just have the one today. Uh, if we, do you want to talk about some other ones first, or this one that we both have? Oh, let's kick it off with the the one that we both have. All right, let's go. Split screen. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the cheat sheets by Tiger Tateshi from uh, yeah. the co-production between Fifty Watts Books and Neves, and we were sent these over by Fifty Watts Books. I think they're trying yeah, to grease not- us up to get us to plug it. Yeah, they sent us this book. I can't get over it. It's so, like, yeah. I, I wasn't aware of this stuff. I'd seen the books in the store, just the covers, but this is you know this is mental. This is so beautiful. Yeah, I, I got. I got Moon Tracks. I bought this at Floating World. I've talked about this on the, the podcast here before. And there's also this uh, TRA or TRA. And this one does, this has the work from Cheat Sheets in it, but it's much smaller and it's just not as well presented. It's This this edition, I wanted to buy this. I was going to buy it from uh, Austin English on Domino. And he was polite and honest enough to say at the bottom of the write-up, if you own this book, then you already have this. But yeah. 
as this edition, it's, it's, it's quite lovely. And I was like, Oh, I kind of want it, but should I spend like 30 bucks on it? But then it turned up in the mail for free. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like it was the best day of my life. Yeah. It's fucking the printing on this is beautiful. It's like real simple, just a soft cover, but yeah, just fucking an incredible cartooning. And some of the textures on this is just like, it's got me so inspired to start inking this comic I'm working on. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm about to ink something for that little project that you and I are putting together with a few other people. And uh, yeah, this is very inspiring. Just like, uh, yeah, it's just, it's the joy of cartooning. It's like, it's like a, you know, it's a, a Saul Steinbergian kind of thing going on. Just, yeah. just creativity, just like joyful, expressive experimental exploratory cartooning yeah and it's got that kind of like um tricks you into thinking it's simpler than it is it makes you think oh i could you know but like that's yeah. the most inspiring stuff it's like this is like fucking mental it's yeah what was this, when was this made like the 70s or something it doesn't there's no like excessive notes you don't have ryan holmberg in here waffling on for eight pages i, I love his waffle the like yeah. it's one of my I love Ryan Holmberg's stories about the artist and the context. But yeah, this is contextless and just uh to know there's this horse racing uh, one where they like ride the horse and the, 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 they turn the corner and like the the reflection becomes the horse and just stuff like that. It's uh yeah. Just fun cartooning, a bit zen, a bit, you know, oh, I don't know. It's just yeah, just just lovely cartoon. There you know very influential stuff on like you know modern you know the last 30 years of american sort of alternative cartooning i mean this guy was just doing it all and yeah you'd be a you'd be a fuckhead not to buy this um, yeah this is fuck, this is like and it's so good the thing i like seeing is like the build-up to these like uh very intricate like big things like you see a simple thing he's done on this page a simple thing he's done on this page and then all added mm -hmm. together kind of you get these like larger more dense pages that yeah, I just I've been looking at this book the whole week since I got it, and uh, it's been blowing my mind every single time. I love the cover. It just starts off with just a strip on the cover, and just it almost yeah. looks like an IKEA instruction manual. So it's just, just yeah, real simple, real, real, real nice. Yeah, I love what fifty. What? Oh, sorry, Josh. What? I was gonna say I recommend everybody watching gets this book. Yeah, I, I really would if you're, you know, a cartoonist, as most of the people who watch Manga Chat are. I, I don't think anyone but cartoonists bothers to watch this uh, waffly shite. Um, yeah, you'd be remiss in your duties if you didn't pick this one up. This is a real banger. Great to have on the shelf. Great to have in the bathroom. Great to show your friends. And, yeah, inspiring. It's got Josh and I both feeling inspired and just, yeah, yeah real love of the craft and yeah craft let's let's underline that word uh craft and and work um yeah yeah just yeah yeah highly 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 recommended and yeah 50 watts books their website they have a lot of good books on there there's lots of great zines and weird shit you can pick up uh, i i imagine desert island and shops like that would have this your floating world your you know your local metropolitan hotspots partners and sun if they don't have this like what what you're doing I know. I think uh, Dave from Secret Headquarters who was just here. He was. He was toy. He was. Have you seen this thing? I was like, Oh fucking hell, I have. And yeah. we were just in awe of it. Yeah, just perfect cartooning, like all the way through. Yeah, and yeah, and worth worth picking up the other stuff as well. Like uh, you know, I love I love this book. I yeah, I think it was in Kramer's Ergot. I first saw a bit of Tiger Tateshi stuff, and then I pick this up at floating world and just you know his, his color stuff is is crazy it's, you know it's all the all the full color painted stuff is fantastic but yeah. yeah the purity the purity of that black and white stuff and and a lot of this stuff is color stuff that like i guess later work i don't know it's very abstract and but there's real just cartoony fun in that cheat sheets book yeah oh the production of these books are incredible as well just just yeah, it's really, we're talking about manga. You know, this is this is the stuff. This is mind blowing. You know, put your One Piece down, put your yes. Naruto down. Come on, that's not manga. Well, it is, but put your it's, it's like reading. Yes, go. It's like, down. it's like reading Batman versus reading like Jim Woodring or something. You know. Yeah, yeah, it is very Jim Woodring, isn't it? It's like I didn't think of that, but yeah, it's like 
Or Jim yeah, Woodward. The, sur- the surrealism. You got it's like Beatlemania over there, Josh. You've got children screaming out out your window. Are you uh, that popular? The school next door is. Uh, I think it's just. Um, end of school or something i should have closed that window but too late now i, I know you yeah i know you sold a lot of copies of power wash but fucking hell very yeah, yeah. popular you got recognized by four separate people at san diego comic con josh but this is not see man they're, they're yeah targeting you at home jesus yeah, yeah no please 50 watts books so thanks so much for sending these over guys uh we need to get an address out there josh so other people can send us free books as well because i do love getting free books yeah, how do we how do we get what do we do in address wise? If I, I could use my mother in law's PO box and then I could ship uh, you cartoonist K Fab Fade mailbox episodes. We should uh, they don't do it anymore. We should just take it. Yeah, I used to do it for uh, Truth Zone back in the day. People used to send me books all the time. Uh, Breakdown Press, you know, when they were first getting started, sent me a bunch of stuff with and and drugs as well. I was mad at them. I said I'm using my father in law's PO box. He's like a prominent banker. Like, please don't send, please don't send high-powered hydroponic marijuana to his PO box. Uh, but, yeah, but yeah, no, I'd love to get free books again. Um, this, is, this is fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, go get the Tiger Tateshi. <coughs> with the yeah, with with my order, I, I'd ordered this from Fifty Watts Books. So I was talking about this guy last week, this David Enos, who's been in the Bat King Decay. But lovely stuff. All uh, got nice, nice quality to it. Um, you can get this from Fifty Watts Books as well. A bit naive style, fits in with all your Fort Thundery stuff if you like that. And, you know, your Matthew Thurber or whatever. But yeah, good, good surreal kind of story. It was, you know, kind of weird, kind of odd. I, uh, I very much enjoyed it. I sat there on the couch and read it and it was good. You know, get some hippies in there and stuff. A bunch of hippies playing weird music. It's kind of dreamlike. But yeah, I, I recommend it. It's, uh, That's cool. It's good stuff. Yeah, Wh- Whispered Words by uh, by David Enos. Uh, you can get it from 50 Watts Books along with the Tiger Tateshi book. While you're getting the Tiger Tateshi, pick this up as well. And also, if you're there, if you're at 50 Watts Books, Warm Television. Oh, they've got the Warm Television, do they? Yeah, they have some copies of Warm Television. Yeah, I know Secret Headquarters still has a few. I was looking through the Secret Headquarters website. There's a bunch of hot new rare stuff on there, and you can also get the uh, the Warm Television. Nice, a, nice. A banger. I'm surprised no one's reviewing warm television. I guess most comics critics are just like uh, dumb fucking cunts who have no good yeah. taste at all and don't appreciate good comedy or don't know. Yeah, I sent it to the comics journal, so maybe, uh, you know, maybe in a couple of months they'll. Uh, oh, a couple of years. Down. I mean, they seem to be reviewing books from like several years ago currently. They'll go a week without reviewing something, do a review of a you know, two year old book, so. I don't know, you know, wait a couple of years, maybe they'll get onto it. They're extremely behind the times. I don't but know RJ like Casey, what, <laughs> what's that? I don't know if I like this guy's profile picture on this comment. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that's a bit spicy. This is the audience we've curated. Oh my gosh. You yeah, know, I think we have to, you know, mildly disavow that. Mildly, um, you know, it could be fans of his. We don't want to alienate, you know, certain, you know, Certain oh. members of the fan base. We're, we're inclusive here. We don't mind. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. But yeah, no, th- that's someone there just said, uh, yeah, warm television. Funniest thing I've read this year. That's very nice. Hitler says, chill out. It's not Hitler, is it? It looks like, uh, it looks like an actor or something. I think it's like a British actor. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's that guy from, uh, I think I recognise who it is, but yeah, this is this is all part of the new technology. Is uh, I'm getting excited about this, showing comments and stuff. <laughs> Just pictures of Hitler. <laughs> you know, we're we're chill here. Don't worry, you're you're welcome here, channel official. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, whatever you want to do, we don't mind. It's all chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Off to a great start. All right. You're getting, you're getting some great comments here. I'm not <laughs> horny anymore. Sorry, guys. What was that? Yeah, they're ex- I'm so hard right now. Excited for Manga Chat. But I'm not horny anymore. Sorry, guys. And it's, it's the second person now asking what we had for breakfast. Um, yeah, yeah. Bit, uh, bit uh, triggering. Uh, um, I was at the hospital this morning. So. I, had a, I had a tuna salmon bagel. Tuna salad oh. bagel, not tuna salmon. I had nothing. I was at the hospital. Um, 
yeah. my child was sick, so off at the emergency room, had to do a horrible poo in a horrible bathroom, I'm dreaming of eating food, but. I ate food afterwards, but it was technically lunch. Um, so yeah. What did you have for lunch? Uh, breakfast foods, um, eggs, <laughs> and bacon. A bit of halloumi. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was lovely. Uh, squeaky cheese. cheese. Yeah, squeaky rubbery sheep cheese. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, no, they're, they're asking about. They're asking the Nate Garcia question. Hopefully, Nate will return at some point. He is. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen people in the comments proffering bizarre reasons for why Nate's not here. He's working on his yeah. book, Flippy. Uh, he's touring with his band, and uh, he probably just got sick of us waffling on about stuff all the time. And he's like, "I'll let you guys destroy your careers." <laughs> He's smart to smart to take a break. Keep your Hitler fans. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What other books do we have? I have none, but I've I've got I just got this in the mail. I was just complaining. I, I saw it was yeah, yeah. the new Noah Van Skyver. It was turning up everywhere in all the shops. And I, I asked my wife, I said, Don't we have a subscription to that from Uncivilized Books who publish it? She was like, Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. I said, well, why is everyone getting the fucking book before we do? We're the subscribers. Shouldn't we be getting them first? Isn't that the perk? Um, but it finally turned up the other day, weeks after I saw other people were buying it from shops, and I could have had it weeks earlier. But anyway, a bit salty about that. I'm not going to lie. But it's here. Yeah. I haven't read it yet. Love Noah Van Skyver, obviously. Um, looks like another fun banger. I hope he's getting paid well for this, because I know I, I didn't do my floppy with fanographics because – you know, I'd only get like ten percent of the cover price, but if I did it myself, I got a hundred percent. So, you know, if Noah was doing this on his own, he'd be making way more money. But um, yeah. I'd, I'd love to know what kind of deal he's getting from Tom, who's a lovely guy. Tom Kaczynski, at Uncivilized, Mwah, bang up, lovely guy, fucking absolute sweetheart. Knows where all the best pierogies are. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I hope Noah's getting paid well. I, I know I, I've wanted to talk to Noah about dad stuff. Like, you know, we, we had a kid around yeah. the same time, me and Noah, and it's, it's hard keeping up the art practice and mailing books out with a toddler running around. So maybe he just decided, fuck it. Like, I can't, I can't be sending zines out on my own. I have to get Tom to help me. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm insisting on shipping out my own books because uh, I want more money. Yeah, yeah. Wanna... you can like knock out all those orders in a day or two. It's, you know, it took it was two thousand books. It took me two days, I think, to pack them all and drive them all down to the to the drop off point down the back of the USPS or whatever it is. Um, you know, not that bad. You know, it's like sixteen hours of work. I was working the nights as well. I, you know, it was twenty hours of work. I don't know. Um, yeah. Worth it. It was the choice between four thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars. What are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. someone asking a question. What's the deal with Josh's fanographics book? Um, the the deal is there will be one. I don't know when yeah. yet, but but yeah, it's all you know. There will be a Tedwood book in the coming days. I don't know when. Yeah, early 2025 or something. I think the, the 2024 schedule got pretty backed up for fans, and they had a lot of lot of shit on the boil yeah. so i think it's better that you in 2025 anyway it gives you more time to finesse the book and yeah yeah and frankly all the money's in self-publishing so you you know you, i've kept telling you like just keep doing the zines in the meantime and yeah you know release the book in chapters as zines so you can live on the way and the book comes out it's for the library market it's for the bookstores it's for barnes and noble we have to think about you know prioritizing ourselves and our livelihoods so more yeah. DIY, you know, doing a YouTube, we're doing the YouTube channel, trying to get the word out for everyone, you know. Know about Skyver, you know, he's got a kid, he, he needs money. Um, issue two, run civilized, go pick it up. It, it's really fun. This is a this reminds, makes me think like I'm reading Peep Show or something, like a Joe Matt comic. Well, it's not that filthy, obviously. No, it's not doing any wanking in here. He's a kid in the comic, but uh, maybe there's some wanking in this one. I don't know. Is that all uh, but, childhood stuff, right? It's it's all the childhood stuff, yeah, sort of about. Sorry. You that's know. all my favorite of his, like One Day Tree, uh, My Hot Day. That stuff is, you know, that's my yeah, favorite stuff. A scene with like a crumpled uh, Todd McFarlane Spawn comic here. And, you know, this, this hits it for me because I'm 41. I grew up like with all the image comics in my school desk. Like, you know, I saw the beginning of the defection of all the Marvel guys leaving and starting image. And it was a really exciting yeah. time. And uh, 
Yeah, no, it's like he's really tapping into something there. It's it's a great series. You know, if you like fun comics, if you're older like us and you enjoy stories in your comics and emotions and feelings, you you know, check check out Noah's stuff. I still haven't read Noah's big uh, Joseph Smith uh, Mormon book. Um, Me neither. Yeah, I'll get around to that eventually. That's just like that's a big undertaking. That's like you have to be in the right kind of mood to get into that. And uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I doubt he. I doubt he's read it. I, I doubt Noah's read it. He's too busy with his kid, probably. And just drew it in a in a stupor, and then just yeah, hit the print button. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Someone said down here, Josh Pettinger, future New York Times bestseller. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I think when I when I was a New York Times bestseller for Mega Hex, um, I think Amsterdam also was a bestseller. I think we sold like three thousand copies of Mega Hex uh, initially, the first print run. It sold out. And I was like, really? That's all it takes to be a New York Times bestseller? 3,000 copies? That's actually yeah. really depressing. Um, yeah, it's, it's not that impressive. Like, hey, I'm a New York Times bestseller. I, I sold 3,000 copies of a comic book. And people are like, ugh, that's not many. Ugh. I mean, I guess you have to sell that many really quickly. I think the impressive thing is how quickly you sold 3,000, you know? Yeah, I think that, and there's a bit of greasing, I think, behind the scenes. I think it used to be like 10 certain bookstores would be the barometer or something for what it was. But I mean, yeah. now they just took comics off. They just, they can't be fucked with comics. The New York Times just said like, oh, fuck you comics. We don't even value anymore and stop doing it. And I think yeah. if you're like Dogman or Raina Telgemeier, you can get onto the fiction list or the regular list. But I don't think we stand a chance anymore. Um I was really pissed off when they took the list away because my third book, One More Year, also would have been on the list. I mean, the, the sales, like, it was greater than the previous two. I, I would have had a hat trick. I would have had three wow. New York Times uh, bestsellers in a row. But I don't know. In this day and age, is it even a good thing to have New York Times written on the front cover of your book? That's probably I mean, going to make a bunch of people. Like, being able to say three times New York Times bestseller, that's pretty, you know, two times New York Times bestseller. It's not, you know, it doesn't, doesn't sound like anything, but three times. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of people would just say that's detrimental. Maybe, like, Ugh, you know, times they suck. <laughs> yeah, people might think your books have, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, New York Times feel to it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like Crisis Zone was on the Guardian's best books of the year. It's like, oh no, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I used to. I was gonna say I used to like the Guardian. No, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I used to like read, religiously read uh, Charlie Brooker's uh, oh. in the Guardian. It was so good. Or, uh, was screen burn, or, or what I think it was screen burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was so uh, good. Charlie Brooker. Charlie Brooker used to be great. I mean, fucking yeah. I used to, like, they got all collected into a book. Uh, something of it, like it was like some like Night of the Living Dead, something like parody on the cover, but. I remember, but it was, yeah. I think I've got it over here. Dawn of the Dumb, I think. That's it, yeah, yeah. I, was... <laughs> I, love, I, I can basically just pull anything off the shelf that you ever <laughs> mentioned. I just go over and just, yeah, I've got Dawn of the Dumb and, and the Screen Burn. There's a couple of other yeah. ones as well. I had that Dawn of the Dumb cover uh, book, yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. It was like great. Uh, also, got the, great also I, love Phil, I love Philomena Kunk. Do you like Philomena Kunk? Uh, I tried watching the Netflix show and I couldn't. I couldn't stick with it. It was you know. No, nah, well the net the Netflix one's shite, isn't it? It's like you know Black Mirror shit now. You know, I mean, I think if Charlie Brooker came back and did Screen Wipe, it'd probably suck. Um, I don't think he'd be as loose with his tongue. Charlie Brooker was the best when he was fucking mean. Back yeah. in the day when he was just a, a vicious cunt, that was so fucking good. Um, but that, that, the art of that is kind of dying now. Even like Nathan Barley was kind of this like hateful like sort of angry show that was you know it's underrated people a lot of people don't like it i think nathan barley's brilliant um, it's great it's fucking chris morris on there i mean it's, it's brooker and morris together just like ripping apart vice magazine culture not contemporary vice we're talking about vice from like two decades ago when vice was all vile hipsters and just all like you know now it's just all vile activists <laughs> it's yeah. It's very funny what happened to vice like you know it's gavin mcginnis initially and like so far removed from what it was and you know, it was all edgy boys back in the day. Now it's just all like soft cocks and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I was there in the middle. I was doing Megan Mog online for Vice, like in the middle, like in this transitional, weird, blurry period. I, I, I was, you know, I was going to say I wouldn't work for Vice now, but I just I don't even know if they exist. Do they? <laughs> Do they still fucking exist? I think they went bankrupt. They just went bankrupt, and I think like you, you, I think they exist like as a skeleton of what it was, but. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. It used to be fun. I mean, Vice used to be so fucking fun. Like twenty yeah. years ago, like it was so fucking cool and so fucking fun. And, and now it's just like a school mom just like yelling at you and telling you what not to do and what to think. And it got really boring. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. No, and they went bankrupt. The market seemed to kind of say like, "Hey, fuck off." <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, book? Got your Shrowen book here. I uh, talked about oh, this a few weeks no. ago when I ordered it. Yeah. So I'm kind of conf- yeah. I haven't got that one yet, so I'm confused about how it's – so it's like separate issues and then a book. Well, there was Sunday 1, Sunday 2, Sunday 3 slash 4, and now this one's just wrapping it up with Sunday 5, 6, 7, and X. Oh. There's a weird extra chapter. Yeah, it's just like, you know, I don't know. He could have released them. As individual issues. I have not read this yet, so maybe it all goes together as one big thing. But, yeah, it does seem kind of confusing, Sunday 5, 6, 7, X, um, you know, because, like, the spine, this, you know, it's like Sunday 5, Sunday 6, Sunday, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, I got a little bookmark. I thought I ordered the one with the slipcase to house all my issues, but I must have hit the wrong button, so I just got a, a little bookmark. Um, yeah, it looks great. The, the printing by Colorama, uh, Johanna in uh, Germany. Uh, beautiful, beautiful printing. Uh, you know, just nice Rizo stuff. Good good cartooning. Schrauen's one of the best. A uh, bit expensive. Dave and I were just saying, like, I was like, to get these in for Secret Headquarters. And he's like, well, they're like 30 euros and then the shipping. And, oh. it's you know, it just puts the price up for the consumer. So, yeah, I don't know if a lot of American stores are ordering these. I'm not sure if you can still get them from Colorama. They may have sold out. Like the, the first so, few yeah. issues of this, the first few issues famous for selling out, but they may have printed more. And uh, I mean, do you yeah, know really. if it's be just one big book or? Say so what? Do you know if it's going to be just one big book or is it going to stay as like issues? I mean, I, no, I'd imagine Fanta is going to put it out for the US market. I mean, yeah. It'd be, you know, he'd be, Shrowan would be crazy not to let them. And yeah, yeah, lovely stuff. He's just, he's just so, so much with so few lines. I've seen that without the shading. Like, I've, so that's just pencil lines. And then he's like shaded it up. But yeah, he's, he's getting real good at drawing, can capture real, uh, you know, emotions and faces. And yeah, yeah, this one looks like a real fun one, real crazy, real weird. Like, just, yes, yeah, really just flipping through. There's some really crazy shit going on. Yeah, it's, it's a time commitment. Like, I feel like I have to reread the first few issues and, uh, you know, really sit down and spend some time with this. And, yeah, it's hard to find the time. As workaholics, Josh, like, it's, it's, you know, you know, it's just hard to, oh, I'm just going to sit down for three hours and just read comics. I, you know, yeah. I'm, a dad, I'm a workaholic. I don't really have time to do that. But, you know, I need to put it in the toilet and, like, read a chapter of poo or something. I think that's how most you know, people probably get these things done. Yeah, you know, I've got another book I bought here, Josh, secondhand. You you saw the second one of this in, a, in your, yeah, your yeah, secret I saw, bookstore. I saw this in a used bookstore in Philadelphia, the second issue of that, and got it. And um, I saw packed away because I'm moving, so I can't get that yeah. out. But, yeah, Little Lit. Yeah, that one had a Charles Burns cover, the one you picked yeah. up. Yeah, I, I, I read this. Uh, this is by this is by uh, like Art Spiegelman and Francois Moulet. Uh, Moulet. Um, yeah, this is like a spin-off of Raw, kind of, like for kids, uh, Little Lit. Um, I, I read this, I think, in 2000 or 99 at my stoner friend's house. Um, vividly remember being really high, and I was probably like, you know, well, 18 or something, 17, and I, and I read this. Um, yeah, it's got a big, uh, big like, Chris Ware board game in, in the front here. That folds out. Wow. And you can make little cars and stuff. There's also like, in the back, like, there's... It's all these pieces. One of one of these pieces was missing. One of these pop out pieces. So it's technically damaged. I should write to the seller and say, "Hey, you you sold me a, a damaged book. It's missing one of the little things." But I mean, all this like rusty brown and chalky white. All this text. It's for kids, so it's probably not as funny as the regular stuff. But I mean, this is like just a boon of like classic uh, Chris Ware material. This this looks really fun. Um, well, there's an amazing Charles Burns, uh, like, Where's Waldo spread in here somewhere. That was really fun. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Spooky land. You have to yeah. find all the eggs and spiders in there or something. I mean, it's worth it. This is worth the price of admission alone. Um, yeah, there's also yeah. a really – this is the bit I remembered the most from when I was a kid reading it at my, my stoner buddy's house. Um, there's a, a five-page uh, Dan Clowes uh, Sleeping yeah. Beauty comic. 
never been collected anywhere as far as I know. It just exists uh, in here. Um, don't know if it's any good. I haven't read this yet again, but I enjoyed it when I was 17 and really high. Yeah, uh, Swarte there. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Yust Swart, yeah. Swarte. Yeah. Brilliant cartoonist. Great stuff. But, but yeah, you know, 20 bucks. I got this. Josh Josh showed me the second issue and I was like, oh, fuck, I remember those. And yeah, I found this on for 20 bucks and it was shipped yeah. to me in mere days. Intact, pretty much. Um, yeah, great stuff in here. You got some Kaz, a nice Kaz strip in there as well. Lorenzo Matodi, the kids comic by Italian master Lorenzo Matodi, whose yeah. studio I toured once, and it was yeah amazing. Anyway, it's story for another time. But yeah, Lorenzo Matodi, brilliant, brilliant artist. Uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah. You got the second issue out and properly look at it. Yeah, I ordered the second one as well, but then they wrote back and said, no, we've cancelled your order. For some reason, there was an inventory problem, but I'll, I'll find one somewhere. It's got the yeah. Burns cover. I was going to – I bought this. I was like, oh, my, my kiddo and I can look at this, but she's like two and a half, and she would pop out all those game pieces, like pop, 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 yeah. pop, pop. So this is just for Dada. It's just for Dada. Dada. Uh, I've, got, I've got, got one more book here to talk about, Josh, if you want to yeah. indulge me. uh now, here we go. Look, look at me. I'm like a businessman. Look at this. I'm carrying a briefcase. Look at that. It's a natty little briefcase. Look at that. Wow. But is it actually a briefcase? No, it's actually a book. Look at that. It is a book to make friends with by Lucas Verstrat. This is a Fanographics book. This turned up. I mean, my wife is the publicist at Fanographics, and she gets a lot of books shipped to the house. And this turned up. It's massive, and it comes in a suitcase. And it doesn't look too bad. I flipped through it, and I was like, yeah, this looks all right. Well, those aren't good pages, but, you know, it's just nice European colored pencil -y kind of stuff. It looks, you know, looks like an off-brand uh, Breck Vandenbroek or something. That's nice. Or an off-brand Breck Evans, you know, with a bit of, like, Elvis Studio or something thrown in and with, you know, his own style as well. But, you know, yeah, I'm flipping through it, and it – it looks kind of decent. I just thought I'd show it off. And, and it comes in a briefcase, which is just weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, nice big book. But, you know, questions did arise. Did it need to be this big? And the price tag on this is $75. Yes. Did there need to be a novelty briefcase? <laughs> you need to ask yourself as an artist. I really – comics, it's hard to get people to read comics. It's hard to get them in the door. Yeah, in you know, information age, TV, Netflix age. I'm going to make my book come in a novelty briefcase and make it cost seventy five dollars. Um, I think the European edition. I asked, did the European edition also have an overpriced suitcase? No, it didn't. This was just Fanographics. I don't know whose decision this was. If the artist said, "I'd love to have my book done with Fanographics, but you must," you know, this is the big leagues for me. It's my my dream forever. I must have a novelty seventy five dollar suitcase. Uh, yeah. And the graphics, one of the designers was like, hey, maybe we could charge twice the price for this book and make people not buy it by adding on a big novelty suitcase. Um, that feels like yeah, a, I, there was a conversation had of like, what, like between him and a, like some friends, like, what is the stupidest thing we could get these guys to do? You know, what, <laughs> what are they going to say? Yeah. Because, you know, for, for one more year, it was my third book, and I thought maybe I could have some of that glittery, sparkly foil on the cover. And they let me. And then I did, like, some gold foil and, like, black gilded edges for the next book. Uh, the one after that, I think, I said, can I have some acetate? I want orange acetate and make it look like a pill bottle. And they were like, yeah. And that didn't up the price too much. I feel like they were sensible things. But, yeah, this, this is a weird one. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but if, if you're interested in expensive books that, that – you know, come in big novelty suitcases, uh, you know, at least you can carry it home from the bookstore, you know, sort of easy way. Uh, is, is the handle sturdy? Like, is that going to fall apart? Or? Uh, I mean, it's just cardboard that's come out. No, I don't, you know, if it was raining or something, you'd want to be careful. And But it, you know, it kind of looks like I'm on a trip, you know, it kind of looks like I'm going, I'm going somewhere. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. I, I mean, know. unless you really look, you're going to think it's just a briefcase. Yeah, it does. I mean, just like this. I mean, if I just like, you know, casually walk by like this, oh, hey, I'm just on my way to work. I mean, it, just, it looks like a briefcase. And you know what? You don't need to keep that briefcase just for that book. You could put other books in it. Say you want to go read some books at the park. You could put other books in that. You could. No, you know, I could put my uh, 
I could put my uh, my Sean McAuliffe biography in there, Australian uh, comedy legend Sean McAuliffe. Uh, you know, I can put that in there. Look at that. That fits in there. Nice. And I'm off. I'm off to the park. There we go. It's a kind of a cheap suitcase. You think about it, seventy-five dollars for a you know cheap little briefcase like this. Put your sandwiches, your cigarettes in there, and stuff, yeah. and your your comedy memoirs. You ever see any McAuliffe program? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, the finest Australian comedy you can find. Just surreal, kind of Python esque. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Like you know, he's he's our best comedy export ever. Nice. If there's any Australians in the chat, they'll know. They'll be like, you know, if they're a bit older like me, they're like, wow, Sean McAuliffe, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Awesome. I, met, I met him once. I met him at the Sydney Writers Festival. He was sitting on a couch in the green room, and I was like, fucking hell, that's, that's fucking Sean McAuliffe reading the paper. And I went and, like, sat next to him and, like, Grant, Grant, get a, get a photo of him, like, a covert photo. And, and then we saw him again later. Uh, we're really drunk. We're like blackout drunk. And we harassed him and bailed him up and I like, got more photos with him. And, oh, I love you, Sean. Oh, my God. And, yeah, he was like, oh, all right. And then we were leaving the festival and we went to get into the provided car from the festival. And the, the driver said, we're just waiting on one more person. And it was fucking Sean McAuliffe. And he got in the car with me and ate my flowers. And I was like, oh, not you guys. And we berated him the whole way to the fucking airport, saying how much we loved him and asking him all these comedy nerd questions. And then we, he said goodbye at the airport. All right, fellas, like, bye, bye, bye. And then we got on our plane. We walked through first class. Oh, it's Sean. There's fucking Sean. He's in fucking first class, Sean. And yeah, he must have just hated us. But yeah, yeah, I'm excited to read this. I like my comedy biographies. I've got the, you know, I've been reading the Alan Partridge or Steve Coogan one recently. I've got the Bob Odenkirk uh, biography. Um, love Bob Odenkirk. But yeah, no, yeah, now there's an Australian one, the best Australian comedy man. I reckon you'd like the McAuliffe program. It's really good stuff. I think I think, I think comedy bug. I think Craig Ferguson is the only uh, comedy biography I've read. Really? Yeah, it's quite good actually. There's a lot of uh, he was like an alcoholic for a long time. There's a lot of fun stories of him, like you know, just like pissing himself. Nice. Yeah, and he was in a band with uh, Peter Capaldi. He was in like a he was in a new oh. band. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. It's quite a good book actually. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like these comedy biographies. It's a comedian letting loose and talking about their lives. I, I arrogantly am going to write one one day. A few times I've actually gone to write a biography of my life, my troubled childhood, yeah. my teen years, my, my rise to international alt comics infamy. Um, I've got some banger anecdotes, you know. Like the yeah. Stuart Lee books are great. I love the Stuart Lee books. Um, Graham Duff's biography, I was, I was weeping. I fucking loved it. Yeah, yeah, it's not true that I've only read that because I've read Stuart Lee's biography. I've read uh, probably a few actually. Yeah, yeah, I've got Richard Ayoade's books, but they're sort of hard to get through. They're so meta. He's so, today. so what? He's cancelled today. He got cancelled today. So what? Ayoade? Yeah, he wrote a um, he wrote a uh, blurb for Graham Linnan's new book, I believe. <laughs> really? In this day and age. Right there on the cover. So if you, yeah, if you, if you went on Twitter today, you would see that uh, he's the, you know, he's public enemy number one today. Again, I have most people muted that would be like moaning about that kind of stuff. So I only see positive stuff on Twitter. That's fucking crazy. I, yeah, well, I have wondered before that like, none of Linehan's friends or colleagues have stood up for him really. Um, Jonathan I Ross did, I believe. Okay, and I know Jez from Peep Show kind of waded into that territory and then quickly realised big mistake and yeah, uh, yeah. ran away with his tail between his legs but yeah no one's uh, no one's stuck up for for linehan uh, career suicide um, yeah, it would be wouldn't it yeah. Yeah. i almost had a linehan quote on the back of mega hex but he said no <laughs> i i dodged a bullet there but you know yeah yeah, yeah. i wouldn't mind though if it was on there i just think it was funny <laughs> i wouldn't change it or edit it i just leave it on there like, yeah whatever yeah if only I got that J.K. Rowling quote for Amsterdam as well. Ah, oh, she just said she was busy. She, I love the book, Simon. Love the book. Love the witches in this one. Love this one. So magical, but I'm, I'm busy. Yeah. She was washing her hair. Jesus. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to go and have a look at that. I do love Richard Ayoade. He's, he's very, very funny. Have you ever watched uh, Travel Man? I have. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think they even have like a new host for that now. But Travel Man was really fun and um, Gadget yeah. Man. 
Yeah, I think Stephen Fry did Gadget Man, and then Aowati took over, and then it got spun off into Travel Man. Yeah, so it's it's just yeah. If you don't if you've not seen Travel Man, people, uh, it's a great show, British show. You can watch a bunch of it on YouTube for free. Maybe maybe it's on Netflix. Yeah. I don't know, but I remember the yeah. uh, the Bob Mortimer episode being really good. I'm like massive Bob Mortimer fan. A bunch of them. It's, yeah, it's Richard Aowati and a different comedian each week going around, just like traveling, just doing like a little mini break and like, you know, just a cheap little mini break. It's travel porn. Um, I like the Iceland episode. He goes to Iceland with I think Jessica Stevens from Spaced maybe and they eat like that fermented shark. And Richard Aowati, he sort of plays this uptight kind of character. It's just, he's quite rude to people and uh, it's, it's very, very funny, very nice, relaxed, gentle sort of acerbic yeah. television. Well, it's a shame to hear about AORD, but it'll weather it, you know, it's it's whatever. Yeah. A bunch of people have a waffle and then they'll move on and Yeah, balls. Balls on AORD there. That is yeah. I mean I'm not sure it might be like an old <laughs> quote from an old book, but it's like doing the rounds today, so I assumed it was new. <laughs> yeah, it's just like now. I mean it's like, it has to be an old quote, surely. Otherwise he's just like mental. Like he's in Star Wars now and like I think AORD's in some new big production of something. It's like You'll yeah. get Gina Carano's. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've been waffling about British comedians and Australian comedians for a while. People signed up for Manga Chat, not, well, we can talk about whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Totally we started bad. off with some, you know. Hmm? You've been watching Telemarketers. Fucking great. Do you finish it yet? Telemarketers, no, still halfway through the uh, second episode. I do realise that we're scabbing right now, Josh, by I think by us uh, influencers that we are, by plugging and talking about these uh, studio programs, I think we are technically scabbing. If anyone from the WGA is watching this, we're probably in big trouble. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, scabs, that's what we are. Scabs. Hyper. But, you know, Telemarketers is good. Uh, episode and a half through the three-episode thing. It's, uh, it's on great HBO TV. Max. Uh, yeah, great documentary so far. A bunch of crazy heroin addicts working at a telemarketer's place. It really – I used to be a telemarketer, so it really did remind me of my old – you know, I used to work – you know, there was a lot of drugs. My drug dealer worked at the telemarketers. Um, yeah, it really had a lot of flashbacks to our rowdy, smoky – like, what were you, like, selling or were you, like, a fix-it guy? What were you doing there? Hi, my name's Simon. I'm calling from EMRS. That's uh, something, something, uh, market research. Uh, we're doing a survey about the bank right now. Uh, you're on records. You're with the NAB, the National Australia Bank. So we just like to do a short, it'll probably take five to seven minutes. Uh, you can actually win a voucher for, uh, you know, for blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and, you know, you just try and trick drunk people. It was all, it was all about the demographics. It's all about trying to get, like, the, the 19 to 25 male demographic because they do not want to talk to you. They're masturbating. They're watching the footy. They've got something better yeah. to do. Lonely old women, easy. But, uh, yeah, yeah, horrible job, just monotonous. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all work from home now. I sometimes fantasize about just while I'm drawing my comics, having a headset on and just, you know, making money yeah. That. Well, you'd be really burning the candle at both ends doing that. I mean, you'd be clever. Like, Fuck, I, that's genius, Josh. I should do that as well. <laughs> You're just sitting there drawing and just for a few hours a day, just like, hi, it's Simon from EMRS. I'd like to talk, you know, serve at the bank. Like, yeah, great. Like, you know, it, fucking hell. So this is funny. the kind of stuff we should be doing on Manga Chat. This is helpful to young cartoonists. Like Ethan Llewellyn, like, if you're watching, like you need to – Start doing from home telemarketing work. Um, you can make extra coin while you're getting these comics done. You can grow your, your style, your comics. You can experiment. It'll take yeah. the load off a little bit. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of genius. This is a revelation, Josh. <laughs> Imagine next week we're both telemarketers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the middle of doing this. So hang on, I've got to do another call. i got to get my quotas up. Uh, yeah, yeah. you got to get yeah. those vouchers out. You're sitting on too many vouchers. <laughs> yeah, we can have all scam stickers like they did on that documentary and yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just say that we're the police. Hi, we're the police. Anyway, that's a reference to the documentary. You, you know. yeah, yeah. Have I got any, any DVDs? I bought a copy of uh, Smokey and the Bandit with uh, oh, Alex yeah. Graham. In Alex Graham's Instagram story, she was like, I did not think I'd enjoy this at all, but it hooked me from the opening minutes and I just went on a wild ride. And I was like, oh, fuck. Now I want to watch Smokey and the Bandit, so you know, pick that up for very cheap, like five bucks or something. Yeah. Yeah, but Burt Reynolds. 
And I got, you know, I got Dead Man's Shoes, uh, oh, Nathan Cowdery yeah. suggestion. Classic Shane Meadows movie. Uh, have you seen uh, Room for Romeo Brass? The other, I think that my favorite is I haven't. Romeo Brass. Paddy Considine plays this really like kind of demented, like uh, threatening character in that. It's fucking, it's like harrowing at, at points. It's so good. Sounds, sounds lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got, I got, come on, they got this as well. Funny pages. So I had to buy a European DVD of it because there's no one. I thought Criterion had put it out. You know, it's an A24 film, but it's not been released in the US. It's been like a year or something. So I, I've still not seen it. I I, ref, I, I, I was oh. going to wait for the DVD because I, I didn't want to rent it digitally. Like, fuck off. Like, you know. So I thought I'd just wait for the DVD. Everything comes out on DVD like a month after it's in the cinemas these days. But no. So yeah, I'm excited. Watch this. I can't wait to see what you think of that one. I loved Funny Pages. Like, I've heard people say the opposite, but I thought it was like just a fun, like Miramax style '90s movie. It was really yeah. good. About a young cartoonist. You got Johnny Ryan artwork up there, and all this uh, lettering on the back down here. It's Pete. That's fucking Pete Bags lettering. I can tell. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah no, it sounds really fun. I remember we, you and Nate, watched it year, a year ago. I remember we talked about it. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah I still. Yeah, someone saying they need a funny pages review. Lots of mixed reactions. Well, I will watch it, and uh, we, you know, in the next few weeks, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, that's my promise to you. Yeah, it's a great movie. I think yeah. it's it's like kids. It's like that guy's first movie too. It's like very cool. Yep, Owen Klein. That's the name yeah. of the director. Um, seems like a nice guy. Um, no current allegations against him. He's a safe pair of hands. Safe to talk to. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not done any wrong. Think quotes for anyone's books uh, no. yet. No, not yet. Well, mm. oh, I've just finished off my Erwan water there. That was that was a lovely spring water. That was fantastic. From you, the Shasta Springs, beautiful. Can you, can you does it taste it? I mean, it's, obviously, it's more expensive than uh, you know. A, I'm drinking Poland Spring. It's obviously more expensive than Poland Spring. So, like, can you taste the, the difference? Not really. I mean, it's just water. It's just a bit wet in my mouth, my, my, my dirty old 41-year-old rotten mouth. I mean, I don't know. I, I can just taste rot. <laughs> I, just, I just perpetually taste rot, so I don't know. Put the yeah. fire out for a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, I won't buy it again. It was an experiment, you know. Yeah, yeah, we don't really shop that much at Irwan. They have these nice soups there. It's like twenty dollars, and you get like three meals out of it. So it's actually quite competitively priced for us, really. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought it'd be funny if I bought an expensive bottle of water and uh, and drank it on the stream. So I looked all fancy. Nice. Just you know, I, I say fancy, but I mean so I look like a cunt. Yeah, <laughs> want to separate ourselves from the audience a bit. Yeah, well, you know, we're up on a different level, you know, we're up on a little bit yeah. of a pedestal, you know, they're successful, you know, published by good publishers, you know, quite on successful. Hmm? We're on screen talent. Exactly, we're influencers, you know. As I said, you know, WGA probably won't take us now because we've been scabbing and promoting all these fucking DVDs and all these fucking uh, HBO shows. So I think we are in uh, violation of the WGA rules. So, yes, with Drew Barrymore, we'll uh, start something new with Drew Barrymore. Yep. Yeah, yeah no, we'll get we'll get old Barrymore on the blower That's and like fast. come on over to Manga Chat. Come on, we'll, come we'll on, get Drew Barrymore on Manga That's Chat. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a rough one there. Um, yeah. She's a bit stupid to do that. I, I, I don't know. I mean, did she think that was going to fly? I, I think her rationale is like, look, you know, this like we had three writers. With WGA writers, we have like 200 staff, and we want to get the rest of the staff back to work because they're sucking dick down at the Port Authority, frankly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know, I think Bill Maher's doing the same thing. I just heard uh, yeah. a few other talk shows. I think The View has been going the whole time, and no one's complained about that. But uh, and people love Drew Barrymore. I mean, she was just like, you know, on her knees at the altar of Dylan Mulvaney a couple of months ago and getting harassed by the opposite side of the political spectrum. But now she's incurred the wrath of the other side. And yeah. I don't know, she seems like a sweet enough lady. I, I hope she, hope she does all right and weathers it okay. Yeah, big ET fan. Um, what else? Oh, the biggest. Um, Charlie's Angels 2000, you know, huge, yeah. huge one. Huge, big, big Barrymore fans here. What else has she done? Um, Santa Clarita so. Diet, one of my favourite shows. I live in Santa Clarita. So, I mean, of course, I've seen Santa Clarita Diet. 
I actually watched one episode and dipped out. I was like, no, it's not for me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Someone said Bugsy Malone. I'm not sure about that. I, I, I would have to check IMDb for that one. I've seen Bugsy Malone a lot of times. I don't remember Drew Barrymore being in that. Yeah, we need to get an off-screen fact checker who can like, hey, uh, Jim, can you? Like, oh yeah, she was. She was in Bugsy Malone. We yeah. can just pretend. Like, hey, Jim, can you? Yes, you know, like, yeah, and just pretend. There we go. That makes us look fancier as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, what what else is going on? We're just waffling now about nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're just I'm checking, loving... checking out this new technology, everyone. People should be more excited in the comments about this new technology. We've gone, we've gone fifty minutes without it cutting out. Yeah, so that that's crazy. The last few weeks, it constantly just cuts out, and like Josh disappears from the stream, and I'm like still talking, and like, is he? Are you still getting me? Like, what's? Yeah, it was fucking horrible. Video Ninja. We got Terrible. this background. Look at this. We got this painted background logo right there. Uh, that's that's a background from the poorly received uh, Justin Roiland produced uh, Megan Mog cartoon. Wow. All right. Should we do a couple? I don't know. See if anyone has any comments, and then go. I have yeah. To have a move tomorrow, but tell us where to get Some, uh, quality witches hat, Simon. Party City, of course. <laughs> Why, Spirit, Chloe. Halloween. Chloe, what? No, not Spirit. No. You know, Party City, that's where I get all my witches hat. Uh, they're fair trade, uh, hand-woven witches hats. A lot of the money goes to small villages uh, in Estonia where they're, where they're produced. Uh, yeah, get on down to Party City for all your quality uh, fair trade uh, witch hats. Thanks for the question, Chloe. Fantastic. I think Chloe earlier informed us actually or did say that, like, that is a new AORD quote on the... Uh, yeah. Where's Chloe? Where was it? Uh, Chloe's made a few comments here, but yeah, here. No, AORD and Ross gave a quote for the new Linehan bio that's all about his crusade versus the boop. Um, we don't want to get yeah. demonetized. We're not well, actually we're not monetized. Um, I wonder if yeah, well, new quote. He'll That's make it. a statement in a in a week's time. Be like, I had no idea. I don't, I'm not online. I didn't see. I had, I had I had no idea. I did, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna learn. So I'm gonna oh I'm gonna oh I'm gonna say everything you want me to say. Oh, <laughs> yeah, one of those ones. Ben Higgins says Facebook. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this Tiger Tateshi book. Yeah. I was just going to, it's, it's, for me, it's probably still the, the man without talent from uh, Yoshihiro Suge. Oh, and yeah, the new, the new Suge is coming. Um, I got a picture of it on my phone. Um, yeah, th this one, um, it's coming from Drawn and Quarterly, I think on the 4th of October, I have it pre-ordered. It's the third in the, the series that Dean Q is doing of, of Suge. Uh, it's got the screw style, the famous screw style comic in there that I've never read. Um, yeah, no, really checked out Suge, brilliant. And, and also the, the Tiger Tateshi book is incredible. There we yeah. go. We're all about manga on Manga Chat now. We've actually oh, become... It's, uh, it's a new oh, dawn manga. for us. Oh, here's someone saying, how do I reveal to someone I'm trying to date that I read weird comics? Oof, yeah. yeah. Do not tell yeah. them. Keep it a secret. They will disrespect you. They they won't. They, uh, it's, it's quite sad. I mean, objectively, step back from yourself and think. You know, I mean, why are you reading this stuff? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with Josh and I for producing it and talking yeah. about it on a weekly basis? So it's a sick thing. It's like you may as well tell them that you're a staunch Scientologist or something. Or yeah, well, it's a bit this weird. Is, this is uh, getting rich. What well, you know? I don't know if you're just reading them. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, we're making bank off of them. We're, we're laughing all the way to the bank. But you're just you're just like a patsy, just reading them. So. Yeah, this does remind me. I, I saw once I was on Twitter, like searching my own name. It was during crisis zone, you know, I was like, oh, what are all the cunts saying about me? There's some poor young person, I'll just say person, but they were like, oh, I, I just, I love crisis zone, but I just, I don't want my crush to find out. Like, oh God, imagine if they found out. I was just kind of like, what's, what's wrong with it? It's not that bad. Like, and if someone is going to like be like, ugh, you read Simon Hanselman's comics? Like, yeah. you know, are they really for you? Is that really a nice person who's going to be that judgmental? So yeah, you know, I had some poor guy on his knees crying like it's satire. You don't get it. It's you know, it's yeah, like it, it's, it's nuanced. It kind of tries to present both sides and be kind of confusing, but in its heart, it's good. It's progressive in its heart. I think I, I'm confused. It's like yeah, yeah. I felt bad for them, you know, and also they're just they're so uptight that they were scared to tell someone. But it's a problem apparently because uh, who was it? Their crap master Zach who asked that question is also nervous to tell a potential crush 
yeah. someone that they're trying to lure into a date that, that they read alternative funny books. Um, you know what? I would just start off with something like, uh, I don't know, like a, like Black Hole or something, just something that's respected by the, uh, the literary community. Just start with that. Like, have you seen that book? And uh, I, just I, like I, age that's really still a bit weird. There's cocks in it and stuff. I was yeah. going to say Alison Bechtel, like a like fun, oh. fun home, still a bit dark. Uh, they're like, why are you reading this? It's all depressing. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you know, uh, there we go. Kate Beaton or something. That's pretty innocuous. Yeah, like, no, it's just it's just a woman in the it's it's, it's a searing indictment of capitalism or or something. Or, you know, yeah, start with that or something. I guess some of those activist comics, some of those popular ubiquitous activist comics are the ones that bludgeon you over the head and try to make you feel horrible about yourself. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, try some of those. Don't know. Try do just Donald Duck or something. So I, you know, then no, then they'll think you're a weird old pedo or something. Like, why are you reading children's comics from the 40s what's wrong with you yeah yeah I just shut up about it i think just don't don't it's tell fair. anyone all right well i gotta go uh let's uh wrap this up i guess i gotta go finish packing for the big move tomorrow yeah yeah one last question who'd win in a no rules street fight josh between you and me um my opinion as well simon's bigger um i uh, i think i uh who do you think's been in more fights i've, I've been in two fights so that's my experience level. Yeah, I've probably been in about that. I said the shit beat down on me once, got punched yes. by a magician. Um, yeah, I've not really been in any real fights. You know, I got a good punch in in, in, in a couple of them. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think we might be a draw. We just, like, both get tired and just like, <sighs> Yeah, I think I'm so. I'm going to say it would be a draw. It would be a smoker's lung fight, wouldn't it? It would be a very short and... Uh... Yeah, just coughing on each other. And then we just like decide like, hey man, peace and like, let's have a cigarette and chill out. Yeah. All, All right, right, well, I'll let you go, Josh, and do your moving. It's been a banger episode of Manga Chat with fantastic tech. Uh, thanks so much for running the tech here, Josh. This is incredible. This is a new dawn of Manga Chat. We're going to get guests back as well. Um, we, we'll let's start booking some right? guests. We've got one we next get week, guests. Then. Yeah, let's let's get a guest for next week and uh, and get get guesting again. Let's do it. All, all right, right, buddy. Well, good luck with the move. I um, hope it all goes swimmingly. I'll talk to you privately about all the business that we're working on. Um, yeah. Go check out those new pages I sent over to you. Yeah, I'm about to look at those. We've got some exciting stuff coming down the pipe. All right, thanks, everyone, for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notification. All that jazz. Love yous. Bye.